today we're talking about reprogramming our subconscious mind. Welcome to the Black Girl Bravado Podcast, your weekly fix for all things mental health and wellness. I'm Brittany. And I'm Germany. And not only are we besties, but we're your besties. You heard me right. It's homegirl vibes here. Get ready for the girls to dish the real, the raw, and the fucking funny. And listen, we may drag you, but it's always in love. Let's start the show, cuties. Hey y'all, welcome back. Hey. They can see this. <laughs> the delay here is to get y'all over on YouTube because we are on YouTube. So I'm waving at our boo boo babies. Can you believe in YouTube land? There are people who have been listening this po- listening to this podcast for years who still don't know who is Brittany and who is Germany. Yeah. That's mind boggling. I can believe it, especially if you never visually see it and it's just become you know. But at the beginning of the show, we say, this is Brittany. But they can't put a face. All because you know who's talking doesn't oh. mean they have a, a picture, a visualization. Okay, they're just saying they didn't know what we look like. Yeah. Not who's who. Yeah. They're putting a face to the name. Yeah. Okay, that makes more sense. I'm like, hold on. You Although I could not imagine you with yet? my voice. I know. Like- you have such a sweet voice. It just matches like you, you know? Like, it's like a... Perfect oh, it's small, voice. little, yeah. yeah. like it matches you. And y'all, I have a big voice. It's not really big, it's just deep. Yeah, it's just, it's a bass It's bone. like raspy. A bass bone. Boom, boom, So bum, it, it doesn't bum, give, bum. I couldn't imagine having a little voice like this. People used to tell me that I talk like a baby. What? It never gave baby. They it gives very much so like mature. But you know, well, I've heard that I have an attractive voice on the phone. Uh- <laughs> Okay. What I got a phone voice. I heard, I heard I got a phone voice. Okay, I'm not mad and at I'm you. up having phone, phone sex, sex with you. Yeah, I can yeah. never. I actually could never. Have I've never sex. been able to pull myself to do that. Yeah. Boy, just come over here. I'll start acting. <laughs> yeah, I'm too goofy. Uh, somebody tried that with me I once. Have no I'm words. like, you are crazy. I have no words. What the fuck? <laughs> like, let's not. Let's can. not. I don't have the words to arouse you over the phone. So then people could be like, "You just do all that shit she was saying. Let me just show you what I'm gonna do." Yeah, I'm a shower. I- <laughs> okay, I like to walk in like I talk it. I don't really like to say too much. I don't say too. Much. I don't say too much, but I'm gonna do what I need to do. Yeah, I ain't gonna say too much. I don't got too much to say. No, no, no. But let's just make it happen. Yeah. If Please, you. I don't want to talk about it. What? However, as I've as I've gotten older, I do like the um sexting. No, not sexting so much, but the talk. You know, if we can talk a little bit, that's cute. Talk about it, like maybe after. Oh, a recap. A recap. Okay, um, that's different though. Then the isn't thing, that two different energies? No, you think? and yeah, 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 for sure. And I also it can be like some talking in the mist. I don't want to talk before. I don't want to talk when we're talking not really while you're having sex. That's cool. I like that. Okay. I don't want to talk before when we're not having sex. That feels weird to me. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, God, now you pre- want me to turn show. you on. Turning me on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like well, sometimes it's cute, though. Let me actually stop. It depends. It depends. It depends. It depends. I, I like to be talked to. First of all, first of all, there's a couple of things. I don't know how we got here. Yeah. It, it got but some, gone somewhere. one thing I would say, it depends on the man. The timing. If you come too quick with it, ick. Ick. For sure. We're talking about something Major that's established. Ick. Established rapport. If it's established, yeah, I'm here for a flirty text. Mm-hmm. I'm here for a flirty, freaky text. I'm here for a flirty, freaky text. I like the flirting and the freaking to be done to me. I don't know. You if don't I, like to see I like it. a receipt. Yeah, I like a reception of sorts. Same. I like to receive. Here to receive. receive. I haven't really dished, dished I don't want to dish too much. I haven't dished much. Out. As soon as I send a message, I'll be like, ah, I sent it. <laughs> I'll start feeling weird after. Like, okay, come on, say something. Back. I know. Yeah. I could receive it all day, though. I could receive it, too. But as far as distributing it, mm, yeah. I could receive it. I'm good for that. Go ahead and send it. Period. Anywho, so how are you doing, freaky? Now, I'm the freaky one. <laughs> now, I'm the sex of the podcast. How are you um, doing? I'm good. How are you? How are you feeling? <sighs> Pretty good. Um. Yeah. At the time we're recording, this is the beginning of the week, so looking forward to a good week. I'm looking forward to a good week, but because you mentioned it's the beginning of the week, we did have a really cute weekend, I would say. Oh, we did. On um Saturday night, we stayed inside, had a cute little girls' night. 
If you followed us on Instagram or if you follow us on Instagram, then you'd have seen our story was lit with our cooking Chronicles. escapades. Yeah. Cooking. It was cute. It was. We just So at first we were going to hit the town. We were like, we're going to go hang out, you know, like girls do. Yeah. But then we decided to practice what we preach and have a girls night in. Mm-hmm. I mean, we haven't really preached it that much. We just mentioned it once. So right, alternatives right, 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 to right, hanging right. out with your friends. We decided to cook together mm-hmm. and it was really fun. And the food was good. It was really fun. It was really cute. Um, we got in our Nara Smith bag. Everything was homemade, it which was, was a, a nice touch. And it was it was cute to collab in that way. And it's something that I don't normally do. I don't normally make hella shit from scratch. Me either, y'all. We didn't sauces, eat till 10 p.m. We made PM. sauces. Damn near. They wanted us to make a balsamic reduction. At some point, when everything's taking 50 minutes to make, yeah, we have to get some store bought things. Please bring 50 that minutes to the for tape. the, the marinara, 50 minutes for the balsamic reduction. The, <laughs> see the olives for an hour. Hold on, this is an all day we're, thing. We're for three one hours meal. in, yeah, yeah. We, we actually didn't eat till 10, but it was still cute. We were like, This is just like having a late res. That's how we were reframing it and mm-hmm. having the perspective of okay, it's fun, we're having a good time. We're going through the motions, but I do think, I do think, and I would recommend do this every now and again with a few girlfriends, maybe rotate going to different person, you know, each person's house and having a meal that you guys are going to cook. Like, okay, this month we're cooking from an Italian cookbook. Mm -hmm. This month we're doing Japanese or, you know, some sort of Thai. Now I really can't stick my toe in that boat. Thai? I don't think I could do that. Why? I don't know. I feel intimidated. Why? Because it's too exotic. I don't know if it's exotic as much as I feel like I can't wrap my my mind around cooking that. Something like Italian, I cook the basic Italian at home. So I feel yeah, like Yeah, you know, familiar. that's intertwined with African American. Yeah, spaghetti. <laughs> Pasta, we do that all day. We've been running, yeah, we've been running parallel with Italian. I mean, for- that's damn near ours. So, but something as different as like a Chinese food or a Thai food. I've done some Asian inspired, but the way I really want it. I've done Asian inspired too, a sesame. And it's inspiration, but it never gave hand. fully. But you know, Asian. You can, if you go to the Asian mark, yeah. it's it's the ingredients that go in it that really flip it. I mean, yeah. you've made a, a curry. I do. I love a curry. So that's, that's more Indian. Oh, I've made a Thai curry. Oh, okay. So you get the lemongrass and yes, the curry, yes, yes. And, you know, all that. I do love. And there's an Asian mark. Okay, so here's something else. Um, We're going to have a Korean barbecue night at my house. Amadel has a little grill and she's going to oh. bring it. This has to be when it's warmer so we can be yeah. out on the balcony. And then we'll get all the meats from H Mart marinated and they have these really good glass noodles and we'll have a time. So that'll be something else okay. we talked about. Cool. Korean barbecue night, although I do not eat Korean barbecue. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll have the sides. I don't know what I'll do, but it'll be that's cute to a have. good idea for you. It'll be cute to have. You eat it, right? Yeah, but, okay. what, but what are you going to eat? We'll figure it out. Anyway, the night was cute. The weekend it was, was cute. It was really cute. And we're going to do it Must again. Must do again. We're going to do it again. Must do it again. So, yeah, that was a weekend. 10 out of 10. Wow. Now that we didn't talk our mouths. It was a chill weekend. Ran our mouths. Right. We ran our mouths and now we're here to run them some more. Mm-hmm. We really run our mouths for a living. I never would have thought. I never would have thought that I would be running my mouth at this frequency for, t- for others to hear. Yes. Yeah, you same. know? Same because. Who would have thought? It's God not something did. I would normally. <laughs> What's that God song? did. God did. Um, no, no, no. I feel you. I feel you. Especially because I like to think that I'm a, a touch reserved. I am pretty reserved. Yeah. That's why when I think that people find the podcast, mm-hmm. they're like, wow, you really have stuff to say. Like you really be, you know, doing your Talking thing. But when I'm like in person and that kind of speaks maybe to the to last week's episode, I'm not so gun code to just state my opinion or how I feel if it's not welcomed Mm -hmm. you know some people are just very outspoken it's not like I don't talk or like you know I don't have a good time but I'm not the type that's like well you know let me tell you this and let me tell you that and I know this and I know that yeah I'm just not like that I know but I like that I I too am not I'll be quiet baby I will just listen I have literally I remember we were at like a selection show or something and Joe was like I really like y'all podcast. Why y'all don't be, why y'all don't be doing that here? I'm like, we're not here for that. <laughs> this actually isn't the forum for that. Yeah, I mean, but we could be. But you know, you, you know I what just, I was going to say? That's what I really think that doing this work 
at the level of which we do it, how comfortable we've created like this safe space where we just come here, we get to talking and we turn the mics off and it is goodbye, good night. I feel like being able to take it outside of this space would be the full embodiment of like, this is what we do for a living. Right. You know what I mean? And um, I would challenge us to do that, which is a great segue into what it is that we're talking about today. Yes. Right. And, and, and another piece that I want to add to that is that would help us be our best selves and live the life that we really want to live. I know. That's what I want to say. It Think. would. It would. Mm-hmm. So um, today we're talking about reprogramming our subconscious mind. Now, we've talked about neuroplasticity on this show. We've talked about subconscious. We've talked about unconscious. But lately, Germany and I have been having these conversations where we feel like we're kind of hitting a wall. Mm-hmm. And we're kind of been talking in a loop about what we want to happen and then just talking and then it not happening. I know. You know, there's actions that need to take place for it to happen. And sometimes it feels like what, like, why do we know? Why are we aware? Mm -hmm. Why do we know? Why do we feel like we want something different to happen? But then when it comes time to make the action steps, that's where we fall off. Yeah. Hella plan and no practice. It is actually time to get in the game. Big, big it's plan. actually time we done mapped out the plays we know who goes where we know who does what we know what uniform to wear for the for the game you actually got to start practicing right you actually got to get out of there get out there and start playing <clears throat> so when i was looking up something about a totally totally different topic um i think it was about the fear of being perceived yeah this girl was talking about how um she was talking about being famous She was talking about being famous. She was like, you know, if you want to be famous, she was like, what's stopping you from being famous? Essentially, is yourself, honestly. She was like, instead of thinking about what you need to do, you need to start reprogramming your subconscious mind because you're the one keeping you stuck. Yeah. I'm like, oh, it really spoke to me. She said a whole mouthful. I can't say it verbatim. We're going to cover a lot in this episode, but it was a lot. So. Should we get into it? I think we should. It's okay. time. <laughs> so, We've been talking about everything else. What is a subconscious mind, you might ask? The subconscious mind is a part of your mind that works below your conscious awareness. If we're looking at an iceberg, <laughs> this is not what's out on the surface. This is not what's at the top. It's what's underneath it, right? So this includes our thoughts, our feelings, our memories, and other mental processes that are not currently at the top of mind, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, it's automated. But the gag is, all the, it influences our behaviors mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and our experiences. It is. And um, I was about to say something. Obviously, it is my job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know what I was going to say. Our brains are so intricate and amazing like they do so much y'all like if you really think about your body as this organism right this machine that is doing a ton of different things at one time like you're breathing you're thinking the conscious is working the subconscious is working you are your body temperature is regulated like your brain is doing all of those things at once at once and and still some other shit that we can't even think about so it's just really interesting a way the way that the mind works and all of the functions of like importance of our brains. And once we get a hold of our brains and really learn how to grab work it by its it. ass, work yeah, with it. then we'll see our lives change. So our subconscious mind, though, there's so much programming that is done at an early age. And a lot of time, not all, a lot of times we're operating on that programming that happened so long ago. A lot of your programming is done by seven years, seven years old. Mm-hmm. Between, I between can't be working. Newborn to seven. I can't be working off that. But we are. I know, which is. That's the thing. We are. It, think about it. So when we see people that are rich, more than likely their kids are rich as well. Oh, right. I because would love to be a Nepo baby. <laughs> That you is say that of, all the time. I really would have loved that for me. It's I, like, I asked someone the same question. I'm like, would you rather have been a Nepo baby or like work for your success? And they said work. I said admirable. Listen. Probably, the way I would have been had my mouth open for that spoon. Probably because ah. the way they were programmed. But <clears throat> if that's just what they really feel. Yeah. Um. So anywho. Yeah, you're right. Like I was saying, most times people that are rich 
when they have children, their children are rich as well. Like, because that's their programming. They've yeah. seen their parents be successful. You know, they've seen how they navigated through the space. They have this concept of money that differs greatly from someone who grew up poor. Right. And a lot of the times, if you grew up poor, it's very hard to break from that, break away from that programming and change the way you live. Mm -hmm. Like, you're super rich. Not to say it's impossible. No. It's just harder. Mm -hmm. Because, like you said, the majority of our programming comes between one and seven. We are in a certain state that we're going to break down, but our minds are in like a really imaginative state where we're just picking up and copying and mirror everything, mirroring everything that happens that our parents are doing, the way that they talk. I saw this little girl. She was like six or seven and she had did her nails and her mannerisms was like, you can tell that she copies everything her mom does. She was like, yes, I did my own nails. I did my big one. <laughs> period like she was just really like you know <laughs> her mannerisms were like that, that of, of an, an adult. adult yeah that of an adult and i'm like the way that we just model everything which is like if i was a parent i would really be taking this shit serious mm -hmm. because i'm like wow the way that i'm navigating the things that i'm pouring into this child and even the things that i'm doing subconsciously is affecting the way that my child is going to operate as an adult yeah it's a lot of pressure. It's a lot. And the the thing is, our subconscious controls 95% of our behavior in daily actions. Yes. Only 5% of our actions is from our conscious. Yeah. Only 5. 95%? I know. It's, we're just working on autopilot. That's a little... Hmm. And that's why we be having these conversations. Mm -hmm. That's why we feel like we know... And let me break it down even further for you. And this is why. Her breakdown. <laughs> this is why. So I just told y'all, we're only operating on 5% with our conscious. And I'm going to give you the difference between the conscious and the subconscious. Mm -hmm. So the conscious mind is associated with logical thinking, decision making, and awareness of the present moment. That's easy for us to do. Yeah, We can be very logical, you know, mm -hmm. but we're, we're using so little of that. Which is why our logic, our knowledge doesn't really take us that far. Right, right. You know? Yeah. It's so easy for us to be like, oh, we know. I mean, we've read books. We listen to podcasts. It's the application. We're educated. So the subconscious is thought to be responsible for storing and processing vast amounts of information, including memories, beliefs, and emotions. So this plays a crucial role in shaping our attitudes, our habits, and our responses to various stimuli and things happening. This is the meat and the potatoes. Mm -hmm. It's not the knowledge. It's not the logic. It's how we really feel. Okay, so you know, but how do you feel about your capability to really go out and do the things that you know you need to do? Right. You know, when it's time to really get to it. When it's time, when the rubber meets the road. <sighs> and that's what it is. A lot of times we're able to say what, exactly what it is that we know. We understand our desires, but it's like, what are you willing to do? To actually achieve the life. What are you willing to do? I'm sorry, I couldn't oh, let it go. Tell, tell me what you willing to kiss it, kiss it better, baby. Yeah, is that what are you willing to do? You know, and in a in a good picture, I guess example of how our subconscious mind works versus our un our um, conscious mind works is think about playing an instrument or learning a new skill, right? When you first start doing playing an instrument or learning a new skill, you have to really hone in and think about what the fuck, how to read sheet music, where your fingers go. It's hard. Shit be cramped up, not even knowing where it goes <laughs> yet. Okay. You don't even know what to do. You can't even wrap your mind around it yet. Right. But the more and more you do it through repetition, right? Through building the habit, it becomes comes like second nature some people even learn how to like you just hear something and you just start playing mm -hmm. you just know the vibes right? right or you become so good at a skill where it's like it's nothing for me to go out there and hit a ball or ride my bike or riding a bike is a perfect example because not everybody plays music but majority of us know how to ride a bike first time we falling off we can't understand it the balance gravity it's a mess then you learn how it's like oh baby i'm gonna get on here and, and you, you never continue. forget yeah. mm -hmm. because your subconscious mind works that way i know automate it same we get in the car we drive we take the same <clears throat> yeah. house to work there's autopilot. so many autopilot moments that happen throughout our day mm -mm -mm. and the way that we think for sure the way that the we way think. that we think the way that we think for sure you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like imagine okay so if your programming 
is in a way that makes you feel like you can persevere and you can overcome. You'll be more likely to take risk and, you know, try new things. But if your subconscious is programmed in a way where you have limiting beliefs, you will sabotage yourself. Yeah. You'll self-sabotage. Yeah. You won't even take the risk. You won't even try because in your mind, it's already like, uh, I can't do that. Yeah. So I'm not going to no. do that. And the T is 60% of our subconscious our programming is, is limited beliefs, y'all. 60%. 60% of the 95%. Damn. <laughs> Damn bad. We're not, we're not doing we're good. We're down bad. But the importance of today in having these conversations is to align our current desires with new programming, right? The things that we learned from zero to seven and even those things that are sprinkled in throughout our lives that we, you know, have ran into and stored deep down about ourselves or had these experiences – those can't be the guiding forces for our whole life. Right. You know, there, there, there has to be a way for us to shake some shit up and have the, the programming aligned with the current vision and mm -hmm. version of yourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We need to really get our things. We need to we get our need, things. We, we, we need, need to live the life that we want. We need to be the people that we see ourselves are as, but that takes deep work. It takes really deep work. It's take, it's going to take more than listening to episodes of this podcast. That's and it's going to take more than us recording them. <laughs> <Listen. Okay. laughs> and that's what I'm saying. The work that we do to like learn, because I'm really good at that. I'm really good at reading a book. I'm really good at reading an article. I'm really good at listening to a podcast. But what I'm realizing is this is going to take something deeper. Yeah, for sure. Something different. It's going to take something somatic. It's going to take something that really gets into the mind it changes things up because it's not about knowledge. Yeah. It's about application. It's mm -hmm. about doing something differently because I want differently. Yeah. And like we said, this is some real deep programming that happened between one and seven. But then for the other years of our lives, we're reinforcing that program. Exactly. Our cognitive bias is helping us to mirror what it is that we already believe is true. Mm -hmm. It's like it's just reaffirming every day. Yep. Oh, you know, we see the same things and it helps us say, we're safe here. We understand reality because, yeah, every day I'm, what is on that a called? Loop. Not just on a repeat, loop. Repeat, repeat. That too. Cycle. <laughs> I'm reinforcing. Do you have any specific thoughts or patterns or behavior that seem particularly stubborn or resistant to change? Like, it's like, it's that. I think my, um, I think generally fear, like being afraid to do things, do things. Resistant to, to do new. Yeah. New and different. And trying things like putting myself out there. Oh my Lord. <laughs> putting myself out there is very scary, but I, I'm like, I'm ready to do that. Like I'm tired of being afraid of like failure so then I just keep myself stagnant or where I am because it's like I'm safe here this feels good but it's not what I really want you know what I mean so I have to break free of being afraid to do new things try try new things push myself past my comfort zone it's my comfort zone that's, that's resistant to change yeah it's like that's the thing our brains are they want to keep us safe mm -hmm. our brains are working to keep us safe but the safe, safe is not always best. No, it's not. It's not. What about you? Do you have any beliefs or thoughts, patterns that are maybe you feel like are? Yes, I do. I have this thought pattern that. And I've mentioned it on the show here before. I have this thought pattern that, that like things are harder for me. Yeah, you have said that. Yes, I have said that, you know. Pastor Julian said a word yesterday about that. Mm -hmm. he, he said something else. And I was like, I hope Brittany is receiving this. What did he say? At the very end about the daughters. Yeah, yeah, carried. yeah. I said, he said the carrying. He did. I, I received it. Okay. I received I, it. Said, I, received I told it you because I told you. What Remember, you I said, me? this is <laughs> going to be your season. This you did. Is your season you did tell me that. You did tell me that. This is your time. But he had said something in the same message about how. You don't have to work hard all the time. Oh, we, girl, I he was said, he said you don't you're not bed. gonna have to work hard. Yeah. Not saying you don't have to work, but yeah. I don't have to work harder than everybody else. Like things are not harder for me, but that is a thought as a thought pattern 
that is really stubborn in and my you mind know, that I really need to I really need to reprogram that because a lot of the experiences that I be having be riddled with an undertone of struggle and I'm <laughs> sick of it I'm sick of it I'm sick of it you know what I'm it sick is of the, the element of struggle being really briefly um that just brought into my awareness I feel like one of my limiting beliefs is that or part of my program is that for the most part, things have been relatively easy for me. Mm-hmm. And if it's not relatively easy, I, I you don't want to do, do it. Yeah. Like it damn near got to come to me easily that I feel like that's worth doing. Anytime it's more challenging than easy, then I'm like, God, and then you damn. only want to do the easy things. Exactly. But that needs to be reprogrammed to where I feel like I can do hard things. If things have always come easy to you, then that makes you feel like I do everything with ease. So when, I'm met with opposition. I'm like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. That is not for me. But the thing is, I can do hard things. That's the reprogramming. Yes. I can do hard things. And guess what? I'm going to do hard things. Right. And hard doesn't have to mean struggle. It could just mean outside of your comfort zone. What you're used to doing. Because that feels hard. It feels hard when you're doing things that you wouldn't normally do. But just like an instrument, it will become natural for me. I'll learn to play, babe. And then it's going to be like, do you hear that sweet tune? Then it's giving candlelit concert. And then it's giving come join. Quartet. Really quickly, y'all, we need to take a break because we've been talking, 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 talking. It's getting real good. (laughs) But we got to take a break. We We will be right back. We back. That was quick, right? Damn, so quick. Yeah. We're back. <laughs> yes, we're back. We're y'all. back. So, I think it is only fair for us to talk about the roadblocks. Mm-hmm. Why we struggle to be our best selves? Like, yeah. think about that. We are really struggling to be our best. Mm-hmm. We are. We are struggling. We are struggling to show up. We are, and it's so important. We talk about this all the time. It gives broken record, but we have to operate from the highest version of ourselves. But we're not negating that it's hard to do that. It's, so, it's, it's, it's very really, challenging. It, but easy at the same damn time. I mean, it's, it's, it's so easy to do what you're used to doing. Like, you really have to be aware. And I know we say this too, like active mm-hmm, mm-hmm. in your life. To do something different. Conscious. Looking at yourself. What we're going to start saying. Right. Conscious. Looking at yourself and saying, now, what are you doing? Yeah. So. So let's let's kick it off. There are a few roadblocks that we want to share with you. Um, the first one is the power of the past, babes. The past will have you in a chokehold feeling like you cannot move forward. And one thing I always say is you ain't going to find me where you left me. But sometimes they do. Sometimes, sometimes they, they right actually there, find you exactly right Hey, old friends. Crisscross applesauce. <laughs> sometimes they come back around and you're in the same spot. And that is how, like, Saying, hey. yes, our upbringing, childhood can have these, like, these experience. We have these experiences that reinforce these limited beliefs. Like, I'm not worthy. I don't deserve. You don't even know. Like, some of our parents, the people who should have been caring for us, might have said some really terrible things to us that left scars. Wounds. Yeah, or they didn't show up. Didn't show up. And it's like, ugh. I really hate that I didn't have a father who showed up. I really feel like that was a... Uh, key piece. Key piece missed. Yes. I feel you should. From I one I to seven. No, no, my, and this really makes sense because my mom didn't meet my stepdad till I was seven. So I had already been programmed. Yeah. From one to seven, yeah. I did not have a present. I mean, I know. I'm not even going to try to make excuses. So I was going to say, well, he was around whatever the hell. I didn't have a present active father Father. Mm -hmm. who was reinforcing and programming. Yeah. yeah. Worthiness and care and consideration. Love. love. No, I didn't. And it happens. And and the thing about trauma, right? Whether it's big or small, sometimes it's not even any, that's a huge, that's a huge traumatic experience, yes, not having tea. a father. But then it might be those also the small little moments where you're like, oh, that kind of stung. Imagine 
giving a, a, a report or a speech and then people laughing at you or something happens and it's like, I don't even want to put myself in a position to do that again, to feel that little pain or going out on a limb to ask someone for, on a date or, you know, just doing something that puts you outside of your comfort zone and you were met with, ne with, with negativity. With negativity, then you say, uh-uh, I'm putting up a block there. Done with it. We won't do it again. Yeah. We won't do it again. Yeah. It hurts. Another roadblock is the whispers of self-doubt. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Y'all know how this negative self-talk can get. Mm -hmm. You know how we can get. It's the constant chatter in our mind, in our minds that turns critical, yeah. gets to talking real nasty, mm -hmm. like, and it messes, it messes with us. Phrases like, I can't do this. I'm not smart enough. I'll never be successful. That's not for me. That's yeah. for the other people. And... It turns into self-fulfilling prophecies, mm -hmm. and then we hinder ourselves. We yeah. lose motivation. We lose confidence. We talked about imposter syndrome a couple weeks ago. High achievers can fall prey to this, too. You start to question yourself. You start to doubt, am I really good at this? Am I really supposed to be there? Is this real? Am I going to be exposed? Yeah. All of that. And it can paralyze us, and it can prevent us from reaching our full potential all because we have this doubt in ourselves. Yeah. And we're constantly reinforcing the doubt. Mm -hmm. And it's affecting the way that we show up. Period. For ourselves. Next, y'all, the comfort of the familiar. This one got me. This is this it. This one got me like that. Like that. By the neck. Yes, y'all. A habit Two hands. loop. <laughs> <laughs> a habit loop. So we mentioned this early on in the episode, but. Our brains are really wired for efficiency. They're wired to keep us safe. And a lot of safety, our perceived uh, perceived safety. But it is safety, though. It's safe, but a lot it of it comes safe. from <laughs> from habits and doing the same thing over and over and over again. That become routine feels familiar. The same feels familiar. Like feels familiar, right? And even those things that are bad for us, being in a fucked up relationship or somebody who's abusive or a relationship that doesn't work, whatever it is, jobs where we don't feel fulfilled, the routine and the familiarity of it will keep make us feel comfortable. Yeah. You know? I, you know, I'm I'm good at it. I've been here for 10 years. Exactly. But and, and when you break away from those habits, it can feel disruptive and it can make your brain say, oh, we're not safe here. Mm -mm. The brain will feel like we're not safe here. You know what your brain wants to do? Go back to feeling safe. So then you never end up breaking free. And of then these, you're spinning the block, spinning the block or staying at the job where you don't feel valued or worth, you know, like people value you there. You're staying in friendships where you don't feel like it's reciprocal. There's so many ways that this manifests in our life but it's happening also the fear of the unknown so stepping outside of our comfort zone this is a biggie for me too we are not able to venture out into the unknown which keeps us from pursuing opportunities or having new goals because it's like i don't even want to go over there i don't want to go over there because that just is so unfamiliar to me and i'd rather stay here in this little box yeah because anything other than this is intimidating and you ain't gonna intimidate me <laughs> <laughs> I know th this is this is real. The comfort of the familiar is real. I've that been one pushing is my myself. Hardest. I really That's my biggest roadblock. That's my biggest roadblock, along with that um negative self talk. Sometimes be eating me up. I know it's because I'm critical. I've been pushing myself to get out of my comfort zone. I like to try new things. I do, but I've been some trying to be less critical. That's good. I'm happy. For you. I, I have been. I'm like, I'm even happy. little things. I'm like, no, just just do it. So and it what? really takes work. It does. Because it's so easy to just be like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, I don't want to be what her. What is going on? I don't want to be her to me. Yeah. I don't want to be her to me. Okay. Another roadblock is our surroundings. How our surroundings influence us. Mm -hmm. Who you with? I ain't going there. Who are you with? Surrounding oh, yourself. I you were no, no, taking no, it somewhere no. else. Surrounding yourself with people that are critical, dismissive, mm -hmm. judgmental. Always got something to fucking say. Imagine what that does to your mind. You know, mm -hmm. it, it couldn't be good. It, it couldn't be good. And it can reinforce your limiting beliefs because it, we negative, we Debbie Downers. Yeah, this, this doesn't feel positive. This doesn't feel like <laughs> there's hope. You know? Yeah. And then we have the societal pressures. We already know 
how this society gets down. The yeah. unrealistic beauty standards, making us feel inadequate, causing dissatisfaction. I need to change this. I need to do this. I don't, you know, I'm not enough. Yeah. I'm not meeting the standard. Causing us to focus on external validation, doing everything for the approval of others instead of like what authentically feels good to us and what, you know, feels genuine. It can have an effect on us mm -hmm. and it's not good. We all have our own unique paths and we need to get back to that. Y'all know how we feel about that. But this can have an effect on us. It can be a roadblock. Yeah. Seeing what ev everybody else is doing and thinking that we need to do the same damn thing. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> Biology is another roadblock, y'all. Our brains and our makeup, natural chemistry contributes to our resilience, our motivation, our tolerance to be like vulnerable. A lot of this is ke chemical. And some of us have a better a, a interesting mix cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, but the, the more interesting part is like people who have lower dopamine levels struggle with procrastination or motivating themselves to do certain things. So you have to consider that too. Are you a person who's just like naturally down I know. or can, can lean more towards being like depressive? How you do know? we, how do, is there a way that we can measure this? Is there a way? That's another episode. Yeah. Oh, I wanna know. I'm, I'm interested to know, like, can we measure, can you check your can your we dopamine measure our levels? brain chemistry? Oh, our brain chemistry. You hmm. know, I mean, I know how we can see like, a general, we can get a general idea based on like someone's temperament and like you said, the way that they're presenting. Yeah, presenting like if they're optimistic. If they're I don't know if there's an, an, I don't know if it's something that can be measured like in a quantifiable way as much as they're in a like qualifiable. Yeah, like somebody sitting down with a psychological like, evaluation. Yes, yeah, psychiatrist or psychologist speaking to somebody through, you know, thoughts, behaviors, patterns, mm -hmm. upbringing where you can say, this is where you kind of fall in this type of pattern. Right. But that happens. People are just like, I'm not motivated. I'm down. I'm yeah. depressed, you know, and it is chall more challenging for those types of people to become their best selves. Yeah. And then that's what the definition of like a chemical imbalance. Mm -hmm. So the final roadblock block is unrealistic expectations. So sometimes some of us want instant gratification. You know, we want it done now. I read the book. I listened to the podcast change. Yeah. But that doesn't happen. And that can lead to some of us being frustrated if things don't happen at the pace that we think that they're supposed to happen. But reprogramming the subconscious mind is a gradual effort. It's going to take some persistence. It's going to take repetition. And it's going to take time. Yeah. We have to be patient with ourselves. And we have to make sure that we don't have these unrealistic expectations that are going to discourage us and call us to say forget it all. And we stuck still. You know? Mm-hmm. We have to dedicate the time and the energy and the effort towards becoming the people that we want to be. Period. Per. So I want to ask you. Ask away. Come drop. When you think about the future. Raven Baxter. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what excites you the most? How did that song go? You can, you can get in, you can see into the future. If you can see, see into, into the future. future. I, don't know. I bet you life would be a breeze. Life would be sunny from it from a distance. Yeah. yeah. But it's not the same. Mm -mm, mm -mm. All our Disney Channel girls, millennial girls. That's so raven. It's Kick us the with the lyrics. I can see. Yeah. Okay. So when you think about the future, what excites you the most and what scares you the most? Excitement and fear. <laughs> what I'm most excited about is, this sounds cliche, but really living the life of my dreams you know that's what excites me like being the girl that I see myself really being having the things that I want to have not having to even think twice about doing what I want to do freedom excites me right like living a life where I feel wow this is easeful I feel like I'm living my purpose mm -hmm. I'm doing what I was put here to do the thought of grabbing that excites tasting you. it is exciting. It's like that is right there. If I could just push past all of these roadblocks, if I could just jump over them like hurdles, hurdles. if I could star. just, she's a runner, she's a track star. If I could just do that, eat them <laughs> up real quick. That is Come exciting, on, right? It's like I know she doesn't do the um hurdles. The hurdles, but like think about this: we want to pick up, we want to go on vacation, we gonna we want to work from a remote place, we want to go on a shopping spree. I want to, and this this shit sounds very materialistic, and it is. 
<laughs> it is. But there's also a level of, again, freedom, yeah. which is priceless. Doing what I want to do when I want to do. Now, the part that scares me is I don't know so much if I'm afraid of doing a thing as much as I said, like I said, like I said, I'm afraid of failing at the thing and everybody knowing that I failed mm. or that I didn't do what I that, what I thought I could do. That sucks. Yeah. It's like you thought you ate that. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that. Like, damn. And y'all yeah. all got to see it was a flop. I like to keep my L's tucked. I like yeah. to keep my L's so low key. But that's another thing. Fuck it. Failure is is a, is a teacher. It's what you make it. It's what you make it. So Now, if you sit in the failure and never do anything with it, then okay. Yeah. But we have to reprogram fuel, the, way we, we, the way we perceive failure. We really do. What about you? When you think into the future, Raven Baxter. When I you... think of what excites me. Yeah. I, I like to think that I have a naturally optimistic outlook on life. You know, like I err on the side of positivity. Like I'm really hopeful. Mm -hmm. Baby, I be real faithful. I'm like, I'm hopeful. Even if things aren't looking up, I'm hopeful that they will. Even though they ain't looking up, you ain't looking down. Right. Even if things aren't looking up, I'm always hopeful that they will. I always feel that. Like, I know it's going to happen. I just don't know when. So that's the part that excites me the most about life. The win. Because I literally win, win. Yeah. yeah. Win in the win. Yeah. Because I feel like. A double like, entendre. I feel like when it <clears throat> really does happen for me, I'm going to be very happy and it's going to be like okay see i knew i knew that it was going to happen mm -hmm. the, the, so it happening and it is like all of my dreams coming true yeah the life being lived the life really that's the thing that's the, the part the exciting part being inside of the life that you've been imagining this whole time yes here we are we just got dropped in it yeah i don't piece. know if it'll be a drop in though. not a drop in but you get what i'm saying when you finally look around and you're like it's here all of this we did it that's have you the, seen that meme i, mean. I said you're living in something you're currently you living it. Yeah, yeah, I seen that one. Saying been saying it for a while now. <laughs> you're currently living in an answer. You're currently answer living prayer. in an answer prayer. Here I am. Yes, yeah. I know that one. I'm ready for my other prayers to be right. Answered. Right. What scares me is similar to you. Not achieving what I just said excites me. Not because other people will consider me a failure, but because I really don't want to see myself as a failure. Like mm -hmm. I really don't think that I could live with myself. Knowing that I didn't tap into my full potential, I would be so disappointed. I would probably be laying in the grave like, now you're done. <laughs> your time is done. And you never even did your big one. You didn't run your race. You didn't. You didn't run your race. You like, actually you walked kept, the whole time. You just kept you never playing laced small. Up. Like you really, you never really got in the game. Yeah, that sucks. You just kept talking about it. That's scary. That's the scary part. Yeah. Woo, big scare. And living a subpar life. Living a subpar life is very scary, it's scary to me. It's scary, yeah. Living basic and basic is subjective, but living basic to me is just not living up to my fullest potential. Knowing that there was things that I knew I need to do, needed to do or could have done and I just didn't do them. Yeah. Basic. It gives basic, y'all. It gives basic. Now, we would be basic if we didn't have some solutions cuz that's really what what we're here for tools but we can't give them to you until we take a break so sit tight and we'll be right back Hey, I have something to say. If you are here and you love us like you say you love us. Actually, you haven't been even saying you love I'm us. I'm like, do that. That's the thing. Do you love Nothing us? Nothing has been said. Nothing has been said. There's ratings that need to be left. There's reviews that need to be left. There's, there's automatic downloads that need to be turned on. There's downloads that need to be turned on and episodes that need to be shared to show that you love us. To show that it's real. It ain't been feeling real real. It's been feeling here. fake. <laughs> it's giving fake love. Cue the Drake. Turn it and on. I don't like that. So if mm. you're here 
and you want to support two black women, which you should be wanting to do, do you have a list of things that you can do? Rate, review, share, download. Thank you. I said on that. Another thing that you can do if you really want to tap in with the community, <laughs> join us over at the Homegirl Hangout. Somebody said you remind them of one of their old little coworkers. The way you be calling people my babies and talking like that. I cannot help <laughs> it. This is who I am, y'all. This is really who I am. But as I was saying, you could join us over at the Homegirl Hangout. It's our exclusive membership community that's hosted on Patreon where we're giving you more of what you say you love. Yeah. Okay, there's tons and tons of content, years and years of things to delve into, to unlock and business and business to learn of. Yeah. And from the from the um latest feedback from our girls who are over there, they've been in stitches. They were cracking up with the content that we've been sharing over there, the check ins and things of the like. So get on over there because we tell our business. It's just a different it's energy. That. It's different energy I over know, there. I know, it is. So if you are yearning for more BGB and Tuesdays just aren't cutting it for you, get on over to the Homegirl Hangout. I promise you, you will not regret it. You will not. And there's no money back guarantee, so hopefully you do. Mm-hmm. Period. Mm-hmm. And you can always leave if you don't like it. But Support just come, us. Just come and see. <laughs> okay, so let's get back to the show, why don't we? We can. Hey, y'all. Welcome back. We're back again. So by now we understand that our beliefs drive our behavior. Mm-hmm. Is that does it all the class understand that? It's a combo. Can yeah. we move on? Yeah, beliefs are in the in the passenger seat of this car. I mean, in the um driver's seat. Driver. They're driving the car. Behavior. Yeah, it doesn't matter how much you say you want something, if you do not believe that you're worthy of it or that you can be successful, it's not gonna happen. Right. If you're scared of rejection. If you're scared of failing, if you think you're not capable, yeah. if you're scared to be embarrassed, Mm-mm-mm. I hate that. You will not let yourself do what it takes to succeed. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand the words that are You need out to be mouth? talking to turn your face so you can talk to me. No, no. Just, <laughs> do you understand? You're not letting your, you're not going to let yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Because again, brain. it's really you versus you. It is. that. That's what we were texting about. I'm like, it's really, we are our only, our own worst enemy. We are our own worst enemy, y'all. So remember, this is how our subconscious can work against us. Imagine that you say, I want to go out there. I want to be my best self. I want to do the things. I want to get the things. You commit. You say you commit to being this person. You start working towards it and then uh, for two days, some, you know, something comes along. A limiting belief shows up. Uh, an inner critic is not whispering it's yelling at you it's screaming it feels at you. hard you actually can't do this guess what you do you drop down to that ver- basic we're just going to call it basic basic oh, let's call it basic yeah. we're going to call it the basic version of yourself you drop down to that basic version of yourself that shows up at your job and your relationships for yourself right you just start operating again from that point of view from that your person. finances yeah and your finances like I, you know what i'm not the kind of person who can be wealthy i'm not the kind of person who deserves generational wealth my mama's mama's mama was broke Ooh. this is destined for me you know and I, I would say that personally speaking i had this this i'm currently going through this experience where i really want to hmm hold on should i say this because my co-workers be listening to this show sometimes <laughs> <laughs> that's the tricky part golly y'all i can't even speak my truth damn it really okay i wanted to know okay this is what i'm gonna say because this is my truth right i am open to the possibility of alternative career paths <clears throat> and as much as i am grateful for my current position where i am right now and doing the work that i am doing i could see myself doing other things now all of the steps that it would take to exploring other things sometimes paralyzes me Mm -hmm. and I go back into this place of like well I'm comfortable I make good money this is cool for now and that that I'll be on fire like okay this is what I want to do this is the year this is the time I'm ready right I've mentally coached myself to be ready to do the thing and then something shows up that level of comfortability the fact that I know this job so well the fact that I've been here for so long that will make me say, actually, no, I'm cool. All the roadblocks. But but truly, I I know I aspire for more. Right. I want more. So 
this is just not stuff that we've compiled to to give to y'all to feed y'all this these are things that we're really working through and i think that like when we say we're having these conversations it's not just being said as space filler or something no it's like we're really having the conversations which which expires a larger conversation on the platform yeah when we have the conversation it's because we're speaking as homegirls who are struggling going through it (laughs) it's like i want more i want we are so tired i'm so i'm so tired and i'm i'm tired of talking i'm also honestly tired of seeing other people live and thrive when they're more Mm. i'm tired of it i'm tired of seeing it and being like wow where's mine waiting for you to do something right yes yes that's where yours is waiting for you to stop looking and start doing stop looking and start grabbing reach for yours queen and now's the time now's the time so So. (laughs) the way we say so to Mm. so all that to say we have to really become intentional and about doing this work and reprogramming our subconscious mind. And we keep saying reprogram, reprogram, reprogram. And some of y'all are saying, okay, now what do we do? How do we do it? Reprogramming your subconscious mind takes about three to four weeks on average. Not a complete overhaul. Not a complete, but to start, you know, start, to start a chipping shift, away. A shift. Start chipping away. I mean, it's going to take more than three to four days. Right. Which yeah. Typically, we'll start to pick something up and put it back down. Yeah. But in a, in a you know, a month time span, what did they say? It takes about a month to create a 21 habit. 21 days. 21 mm-hmm. days. There you go. Three to four weeks. You can create some new habits, some new ways of believing, belief, some new systems, patterns where you can start seeing a shift. Ain't going to be an overhaul, but a shift yes. will occur. And when we're thinking about programming, just a reminder that the conscious mind, that's that 5%, mm-hmm. learns through reading self-help books or listening to lectures, listening to podcasts, something that takes up a lot of my time. And I'm happy, kind of happy inside <laughs> to know that, like, you know, that's only 5%. The subconscious mind learns through hypnosis and repetition when you know better you do better it helps you figure out what you need to be spending more time doing to see an actual shift Mm -hmm. maybe you're reading too much maybe you're you know your self-help booked out and you're wondering damn i done read every book that they said to read i've listened to all the podcasts and i'm still feeling stuck that's because we need to do something deeper Mm -hmm. for the subconscious and that requires hypnosis and repetition and a combination of the other things that we're going to tell you so the thing the tips and the tools that we're going to tell you today that we're going to share today should really help you and you can implement your own combination combination to see what works best for you Mm -hmm. okay so the first tip lay on the foundation when we're going to give ourselves permission to be successful when you got that permission slip for the field trip, you took it home and you gave it to your mother so that you could be able to get on that bus. That's what we're doing. We're giving ourselves permission. So instead of repeating the same narrative of I'll be happy when I get a job or when I lose this weight or when I get the relationship, then, you know, we're going to get lit. You mm-hmm. know, that's when I'm going to be doing what I need to do. No, you're going to change that inner monologue to say I allow my life to be good. That's just the basic. That's right. just the basic. Thing that we're telling ourselves so that we can lay the foundation and give ourselves permission to be successful give yourself this permission and don't feel guilty about it mm-hmm. people might look actually start looking at you crazy you know people people don't receive it so well when you make bold statements yeah. sometimes it's like who do you think you are who she who who does she think she is don't worry about that don't feel guilty about that don't associate it with something negative like yeah, it's gonna take a lot of hard work. You know, a lot of people they don't do that well, and they don't usually make that much. You know, we'll yeah. get to, we'll go on the loop. We'll, with we'll that. say all the things to try to convince <clears throat> ourselves to not do what we need to do. People with money are evil, and they they switch up, they change. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. expect me to switch it up in a positive. I'm way. actually gonna change. Do you, have you been seeing that little trend? I'm gonna change. Where it's like, if I win the lottery, I wouldn't say anything. There would, be signs, yeah. there would be signs and then on the next picture is the signs of what it would be. You're going to see that I've stepped into something. You're going to see. <laughs> I've touched a little You're going to see something. that my, repro- my, pro- my subconscious has been reprogrammed, baby. Yeah. It's going to be loud. And proud. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll be doing a thing. So for the next activities and tools and tips that we're going to provide to you, I want to preface this, preface them by saying that. The best time to rewire your subconscious is when you're in a theta state. 
So theta brain activity. There's different <clears throat> types of brain activity. There's gamma, there's beta, there's but delta. we're going to be delta, but we're going to be focusing on theta. Mm -hmm. So your theta brain activity is the highest when you're falling asleep. Like not when you deep in your slumber, not when you're in your REM, REM sleep, not when REM. you're in your REM, but when you're falling into your sleep, when you're waking up, when you're in deep meditation and when you're listening to binaural beats. Mm -hmm. Now, this state of brain state is the state that they say that we're in in between the ages of one to seven. When our subconscious is getting reprogrammed, we're really imaginative. You can be riding on a broom and it's a horse to you. Mm -hmm. You know, we're playing doctor. You know, kids yeah, are yeah, like, yeah. You, we really be in our bag. Yeah. So when we're in this state of brain state, we're tapping back into that space. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take advantage of these times when we're doing some of these other tools and tips so that it, they can work. Listen, I have my binaural bees going today. Baby, listen, the way I was listening to my... <laughs> <laughs> I have my listen, Ever since I, I... This whole week, for one... I, maybe it hasn't been a whole week. It's probably been like four days now. I've been falling asleep mm -hmm. listening to certain things. And as soon as I wake up, it really worked today, though. When I fell asleep, I was listening to something. And when I woke up, my first thought was like a good thought. Oh, good. And I'm like, baby, this shit is working. <laughs> Powerful. <laughs> this is Powerful. Working. I know it works because when I used to listen to them sleep sounds and different like brain waves for deep sleep, girl, I would be in the deepest sleep. But, you know, I sleep with somebody else. So they, they can't handle can't it. can't handle it too like, much for him. He's like, you reprogram me. <laughs> you reprogramming me. Exactly. Against my wheel. Y'all tap in. Okay. Next tool is positive affirmations. Regularly repeating positive affirmations that challenge and replace negative beliefs is important, right? Affirmations should always be in the present tense. We always. know that, right? Present tense, positive and specific. So we want to say things like I am confident and capable. Mm -hmm. I attract po I attract positive opportunities or I am worthy of success. Get creative on how it is that you want to construct your affirmations, but please don't say do not. Don't have no negatives in there because yeah. many, they say that the universe cannot tell the difference. They say they and it can't. The mind can't tell. And can't it, tell so that's difference. why you don't want to even say like, even if it's not outwardly negative, instead of being like, I will be rich, you have to say I am rich. Yeah. I already am. And take, take, it a fit, take, a, take it a step <clears throat> further. You know, take it a step further. You don't want to be... We we have so many. We had the whole episode on affirmations that we spoke up to with um, Tony Jones, mm -hmm. and she broke down how you can construct your affirmations, create some really powerful affirmations because we don't want them to be very surface. On the no. on, you know, I am rich. That can be very. I get where you're saying we are rich in spirit and in heart and in pockets. Rich spirit. But there's a way for you to really create an affirmation that speaks to you that can help bring that positive energy into you into your life into your world your reality that is filled with depth we want them to be deep too we do <clears throat> so yeah positive affirmations like that. speaking of which we have tons available we have Google. tons of Hang audio out. affirmations now you don't want to listen to them in your ears but you can get the <laughs> you can get the affirmations because we be clowning this one this next tip and tool is some, something that i've been tapping into more also and it's visualization mm -hmm. So we want to create vivid, colorful, mental images of our desired outcomes. So we're visualizing success, achievement, and positive experiences so that we can reinforce this positive mindset. And the thing that visualization does is it really taps into the emotion. It helps you really tap into the senses. Mm. You're visualizing it and you're thinking about how you're going to feel when you're in this experience. So how are you going to feel when you're living in this house or when you don't have to clock in and you get to figure out what you want your day to look like mm -hmm. and you get to work from where you want to work and you just get to go to the mall and buy the things that you want to buy and you're with your family and your friends and you're traveling. You know, how do you feel? What is, what is the emotions that this is evoking in you? Because that really helps reprogram the subconscious conscious mind when we're tapped in on an emotional level it has to be emotional yeah so if you're visualizing something and you don't feel like it's evoking emotion that's a sign that's probably too little it's not big enough it's not really doing anything for you yeah get in there and get deeper what does the relationship feel like 
what does the perfect day look like? What is this first date going to feel like when I'm sitting here across from this person and we're really vibing and we're having an engaging conversation and I'm like oh wow I like this you know what does that look like so pick something you are truly committed to making a reality and spend 10 to 15 minutes each day visualizing it as if it's already happened We're taking it there and your subconscious mind is going to absorb those feelings and images as if they were real. Because again, our subconscious mind doesn't know what's real or fake. They just know that we feel it something right? and it feels good. And that's going to help give you the confidence that you need to make it come true every day. Every day. There was an experiment done where like, but like based on shooting free throws and making it and people were visualizing themselves like making the free throws every day. How would it feel if they made it? Not even actually like practicing. I seen you don't have to practice, but they were just visualizing it. And they saw positive results from that. Mm. So, baby, the way I've been imagining myself, I'm like, oh, yes. (laughs) (laughs) Implementing, (laughs) y'all. Okay, next, mindfulness and meditation. We know that meditation is the way that we can quiet our thoughts, go to a place where we can be less judgmental of our thoughts and ourselves. That's what the mindfulness and the meditation does, is giving it does you know and this awareness can help us identify negative thought patterns it also can help us be more gracious and self-compassionate with ourselves there's so much that can happen in a meditation process in a meditation practice pardon me regular meditation so you also become more receptive to positive changes Whatever your meditation practice looks like, if it's through the breath work, if it's just sitting silently, if it's through your morning walks, you know, you can use the insight timer, you can use the calm app, guided meditation, just having a space where you can be quiet with yourself Mm -hmm. and let things come and go and observe your thoughts without being overly critical or overly judgmental is game changing. That's why I loved breath work so much. It was the only time that I was able to shut the fuck up. (laughs) <laughs> my mind rather you know it was the only time that I was like okay we're here this is an intentional time and space I'm being guided with my breath and through this I'm I'm not only aware of what's happening with my breath but I'm also so quiet in the mind that I feel liberated and free after this is all done you know and then there's thoughts that might come to you you can be more gracious with yourself after sitting with yourself for an hour or 45 minutes mm-hmm. you don't know what's gonna come up I used to be crying. Oh, and this and during the meditation is a time when your the- theta brain activity is high. Mm-hmm. That's how your mind your mind needs to be in that state. And you were feeling good, weren't you? I was feeling great. See, although I don't think Bianca's at my old studio anymore. Mm-hmm. She is in the Inside app. She is. Yeah. She is. Oh. I've done one of her class. I just really enjoy the, the in studio experience. experience. Yeah. And I really, really enjoy her teaching style. So yeah, she had a good she's a style. gemstone. Another tool is hypnotherapy. So this is really yeah. the hip. I want to try this. Hmm. I want to try this because I feel like this can really, I know that this can be a game changer. So you can do guided hypnotherapy or there's some self hypnosis that you can do. And this helps you access your subconscious mind more directly, really getting to the source, what's going on in there. So you can do this through recorded sessions or, of course, with a qualified hypnotherapist. But like we said, subconscious mind happen changing and reprogramming the subconscious mind happens through repetition and hypnosis. And I know hip, hypnosis has like a stigma of like, oh, you're getting hypnotized. It's not creepy. It's the state of your mind, you know, it's the state of your mind. And I, I see it as like a, um, an airplane. Instead of taking the train, oh. you can book a flight. <laughs> you know what that is. All you, aboard. You know what that does. <laughs> so. Yes. Next, you can practice positive self-talk. So we have to really be mindful of our inner dialogue. We've been saying this because, baby, we not only are can be our own worst enemy, we can be our own worst critics and okay. we can be very judgmental of ourselves. So it's really important to speak to yourself like a friend. 
offer yourself that grace, companion, compassion that you will offer your homegirl. You wouldn't be talking to her all crazy if she said something to you. You'd right. be like, girl. Or if she was being overly harsh with herself. There's so many times that I think about like, I'm not super, um, I'm so much more like generous and gracious and compassionate with the people around me. I'm like, no, don't say that. No, you're this, you're that. And it's like, I have to also give that to myself. For so, real. you know, we have to replace the need to be self-critical and overly judgmental with those positive affirmations or, you know, being kinder. That's important. It is. Replace it, girl. Stop. Stop it in its tracks. Another one that's popular that we need to take advantage of more is having a gratitude practice. If you are cultivating a practice of expressing gratitude daily, that's going to help you focus on the things that are positive in your life and take your focus away from the negative. Because it's easy to we go, we'll have a whole convo about what we don't have. I'm so tired of this. Uh. <laughs> you know, it, it, we can take it there. Yeah. We can take it there. But instead, we're going to shift into what we're happy about. What are you thankful for? What are you grateful that you have? Because we have so many things to be thankful for. And what happens is. That energy starts to help you get more things that you're grateful and thankful for. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I feel like gratitude is that bridge between the present and the future, right? The self that we are right now and the self that we wish to become. It's like being content in the current because, yes, we're very happy and we can be thankful for what it is that we have. But also, hmm, it would be nice too. Mm -hmm. it's like a nice little bridge there. So take it every now and again. Yeah. Um, behavioral repetition is a cheat code, y'all. Consistency is so important. This is a great time to implement the be, do, have ideology, mindset, concept. Decide the person you want to be. Do those things that that person does and then have those things that you want. Mm -hmm. You know, so repetition, constantly engaging in those behaviors or patterns where you're like, this feels like I'm doing the things that are aligning me to my highest self. And even when it's tough, is what's really going to help us reprogram our subconscious mind. If it's the diet, if it's the it's working out, if it's the waking up on early, if it's committing to a certain hobby or practice, if it's deciding what it is, changing your job, whatever it is. Not texting back. That too. Make the commitment. Decide who you want to be. And keep doing Align it. Align yourself with those habits and those daily, you know, small little atomic habits that make the big changes and the big difference. And then you look up and you're like, wow, look at me being the best and the baddest bitch there is. Never had a bitch like me in life. Hmm. Final tool that we're going to provide here is to limit your exposure to negativity. Got to be mindful of the information and the media that we are taking in, that we're consuming. Yes. We really do. And surround ourselves with positive influences and limit our exposure to, we know what's not good for us. Quiet the noise. We we know. Quiet that's the noise. That's the thing we know. We know what's going on. Anything that's going to reinforce our negative beliefs, we got to get rid of it. We got to get rid of it. Why are we continuously looking at that shit? We know what it's doing to us. We know how it makes us feel. So find your people. If it has to be a new group of people, sometimes it is. That sucks. I know. Mm -hmm. But find your people and spend time with them, intentional time with them, pouring into them, allowing them to pour into you, getting off of social or maybe tailoring your feed so that you're not feeling like you're inadequate and not good enough. Yeah. I love it. So we've talked about a lot, but before we transition, we want to let you know how you know that all of this shit is working. Right. How do we know that? OK, I've been doing I'm, do things, I'm seeing a shift and now I'm seeing a shift. So you're becoming more self-aware. That's always it always goes back to the self-awareness. You know, are you we can catching, never escape it? No, no, no. You know, but are you catching yourself when you start to overly criticize yourself? Are you catching yourself when those negative self-talk or beliefs start coming into you? And you're like, I can't. Are you catching that? Are you being more kind to yourself? Yeah. Are you able to shift your focus at will? You know, those types of things, the awareness being there lets you know, oh, you're really doing your big one. These are the signs of self-awareness. Yeah, you got to be aware. You have to be aware of your subconscious mind and reprogram it. If you're mm -hmm. not aware, then you're going to be up shit's creek with no paddle. <laughs> Then none of this even matters. None of it matters. You're actually just operating still from the subconscious. 
Another way that you know it's working is if you find yourself taking more risk. Mm -hmm. You find yourself dipping your foot into that pool of fear. And everyone has different risk tolerances. It's not mm -hmm. all going to look the same. We know that, right? But our limiting beliefs causes us not to take risk at all. If you're super risk averse and you know you really don't be doing shit. And now you're like, I'm going to do, I'm going to try. I, I'm, I'm doing things. I'm doing stuff that I know I don't mm -hmm. normally do. Mm -hmm. But I'm doing it. So get out of that comfort zone. You find yourself doing that. That is an indicator that it's working. Yeah. A <laughs> little bit, little by little. It's working. Last way to know that th th some shit is working for you is you start attracting positivity, right? Like attracts like. You think about it, it starts moving towards you. That is a real. I can't wait to arrive at that place, <laughs> that sweet place. It's the law of attraction, right? So reprogramming your mind to think more positively can actually bring more positivity into your life. That's what we want. So you start seeing some shit come to you. It's like, oh, see, why wouldn't this? Why not? I was me? expecting it. Period. I was actually waiting on you at the door. There are certain things that I do be expecting. I'm like, yeah, I'm not surprised that that happened. I was expecting it. And I love that. I love when I'm in that bag. I love when I'm in that bag. I just want to be in there more frequently. I want to live in it. I want to live there. Permanent residence in that bag. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say so. Oh, I was waiting. Uh, it was either going to be you or me. I was waiting. I'm like, so. Well, lady. <laughs> <laughs> well. Well, well, well. Mm -hmm. Honestly. My hope is that we really begin to see the power that we possess in a real way and stop talking about it and actually start doing. Because I myself am tired of talking. I'm very tired of talking. I feel like I've said enough. I said enough. I'm ready to really see some tangible change. And it's things like this that are going to contribute to that change. Something that sometimes seems woo-woo to people, but it's really real. This is science. Like, we're not making shit up. There's some things that you have to do to change the way that you've been. We are older. You know, we're getting older. Mm -hmm. We have been set in these ways for so long. And you really have to get in there and change some things up to do differently. Mm -hmm. It's just really, that's just really what it comes down to and i hope that you all are encouraged from listening to this to do differently because that's what we're doing this for for ourselves and for y'all